Hello my dear friends, I hope you're doing super duper wonderful and in today's video I'll show you how you can create this animated timeline in PowerPoint. So let's go! Ok my friends, so let's jump into the magical world of PowerPoint and I'm using PowerPoint 365. And now let me show you how you can create this animated timeline and we can start working on this blank slide. And first of all, let's fill it with a beautiful background color. So let's go to Format Background Fill Options and let's choose a beautiful solid fill, for example this color. And if you'd like to use the same beautiful dark purple color, here is the hex code. Make sure to use the same hex code and you'll have the same beautiful background color. And now let me jump to my previous slide and let me copy the logo and this slide title. Let's copy these guys and let's paste them into this slide just to save some time. That's super duper awesome. And next, my friends, let me show you how you can create this beautiful wavy shape. And it is totally possible to create this kind of shape just using PowerPoint. But with PowerPoint, it's not so easy. So for this reason, let's use a free online tool called Figma. You can go to figma.com and log in with your Google account and use this awesome tool for absolutely free. And to start working with Figma, we can click on this button, Design File, and now we'll jump into the canvas of Figma. That's awesome. Now let's hold down the Control key and let's scroll with the mouse wheel until we can see this grid. It is a pixel grid and if you don't see this grid, make sure you go into the view options and let's make sure that the pixel grid is activated and snapping to grid is activated as well. And now we'll use this grid to create our timeline shape. That's awesome. And next let's select the pen tool. We'll be using this tool to create our timeline shape. And now let's just click once to start drawing our shape. And now let's just go 9 squares downwards or as many squares as you wish. And let's click for a second time. OK. And now let's go 3 squares to the right and 3 squares to the bottom. And let's click again. Now 3 squares to the right, 3 squares up. OK. Click again. And now let's just get back up and let's continue drawing these kind of uh, sharp shapes until we get as many of them as we like. OK, so let's go 3 to the right, 3 to the bottom, click again, 3 to the right, 3 up, click again, and now 9 squares up. And let's just keep on going until we have as many of these shapes as we wish. And of course, as you can see, currently these uh, shapes are pretty sharp and I'll show you how we can make them smooth. OK. And now we can finalize drawing our shape by clicking on this blue button done. And here we go, we have our sharp timeline shape. And before moving forward, let me just change the color of this shape to something blue so that we can see it better. That's nice. OK, my friends, and next let me show you how we can make all of these sharp points smooth. And this time we'll be using the bend tool. So let's go over here, let's select the bend tool. And now let's just click on this bottom point and as you can see it becomes smoother. Let's click on it again and we get these little handles. We can stretch them three squares to the right and now this point becomes super smooth. That's nice, let's do the same for this guy. Let's stretch the handles three squares to the right and let's do the same procedure for the rest of the points that we want to make perfectly smooth. And this way we'll get our beautiful timeline shape. That's easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And next, my friends, let's make this timeline shape just a bit thicker. So let's go to line width options and let's try using two. It's looking good. We can as well choose the tips of our lines. So let's just use round tips, both for the starting and ending tips. Looking good. And now a really important step. Let's right click on the shape and let's choose outline stroke. And this way we have converted this line into a shape. If we double click it, as you can see, we see a bunch of little points. And this is what we need. Now we can select this shape and we can export it as SVG and use it in PowerPoint. So let's go to export, let's choose SVG and let's just hit export. And now we can jump back to PowerPoint and let's go to insert pictures and let's look for that SVG file. Here it is, let's select it and let's click insert and as you can see it's really small. So let's just grab one of the corners, hold down the control shift keys to resize from the center. And now it's looking much bigger. Let's just move it a bit downwards, just below the slide title. And let's make sure that we click on this button convert to shape. This way this SVG file will become editable in PowerPoint. As you can see we can right click on it and choose edit points and this way we can see all of the points that make up this shape. That's nice. And now we'll have to use that timeline shape to create a mask. We'll have to insert a full screen rectangle and basically subtract the timeline shape. So let me show you how we can do that. Let's go to insert shapes and let's insert a full screen rectangle. Let's make sure that it nicely covers the whole slide. OK, and now let's just send this uh, rectangle to back so that we can see the rest of the elements. 
And now let's select the rectangle first, hold down the shift key, select the timeline shape. And now let's go to merge shapes and let's choose subtract. And this way we have basically punched a hole inside of this rectangle. As you can see, once I'm moving this shape around, we can see through this timeline shape. And this is what we want. And next, let's make sure that we bring this mask to the middle and center of the slide. That's nice. And now let me show you how we can add a little white glow to our mask. And this way we'll get this little nice effect. So let's make sure that this rectangle is selected. Let's go to shape format. Let's go to shadow settings. And let's use this preset in the center. Okay. Now for the transparency, let's use zero. For the shadow color, let's use white. And for the size, let's use 100. And now for the blur, I'm going with 15 points. And that's looking good. And now let's fill this mask with a gradient fill. So let's choose a gradient fill. And as you can see, Parpon remembers my last gradient that I've used. So let's say you have something like this, where you have four color stops. And we can remove these two color stops in the middle so that we have only two color stops. And let's pick this radial fill preset where a color is in the center. That's nice. And now for the left color stop, let me choose this uh, shade of purple. Looking good. And for the right color stop, let's choose this shade of purple. And now our mask is looking like this. That's super duper awesome. And now let me quickly show you the hex codes of both of these colors so that you can use them as well if you'd like to. So here is the hex code for the left color. And here is the hex code for the right color stop. All right, my friends, so we have created a beautiful mask that has a subtle white glow or shadow and that has a gradient fill. OK, and next, let me show you how we can create those little bubbles with emojis. And of course, you can insert anything that you wish inside of those bubbles, for example, numbers. But in this case, we'll be using some cute emojis. So let's get back to our slide. Let's go to insert shapes. Let's find a circle tool. Hold down the shift key to draw a perfect circle. And now let me set the size of this circle to 2.5 centimeters. We can lock the aspect ratio so that once we change the height, the width will change as well. That's nice. And now let's change the fill color of this circle. Let's use the same shade of dark purple. Looking good. And let's add a white inside shadow. So let's pick this preset. Let's use white color, no transparency, and for the blur, 15 points. And this way we have this dark purple nice bubble. Okay, so this is basically the inactive state. And we'll be creating active bubbles as well. And for now, let me just duplicate this bubble a couple of times so that we have a few more of these bubbles on our timeline. Okay, so right now we have six bubbles on our timeline. That's super duper awesome. And now let's create an active state for each of these bubbles. As you can see on this slide, all of these bubbles are filled with a bright purple color. So let me just duplicate the first bubble and let's change its fill to this bright purple color. Let me show you the hex code so that you could use the same color if you'd like to. Here it is. And now let's just double click this bright bubble and we can type in anything that we wish. On Windows, you can just hit the Windows key and period and you can insert emojis. So this is basically a text emoji and we can increase its size so that we can see it better. And now let's just make sure that the text is center aligned inside. All right. And as well, let me add a bit of a shadow for this emoji so that it stands out a bit better. For the transparency, I'm using 50% and for the blur, I'm going with 10 points. And now let's select this bright bubble and let's select this bubble just below it. And let's align both of these guys to the left side and to the bottom so that they are sitting perfectly on top of each other. And now we can hold down the control key to quickly make some copies. So basically let's make sure that we have two bubbles in each of the spots in our timeline. And as you can see I'm using these fancy shortcuts to quickly align all of the bubbles. And all of these shortcuts are possible thanks to a free PowerPoint add-in called Brightslide. Thanks to Brightslide, I can use these productivity shortcuts to speed up my workflow. Link is in the video description if you'd like to check it out as well. And now let's make one more copy and now we have all of the bubbles that we need. And of course, let's change the emojis in the rest of the bubbles so that we have some variety and feel free to pick anything that works best for you. Okay, my friends, we have all of the bubbles that we need. And now let me show you how we can fill our timeline with this bright purple color. So let's go to our slide and we'll be using the draw tool. Let's pick a pen and let's make sure that the pen color is set to the same bright purple color that our bubbles are using. So this is the hex code that we'll be using. And let's make sure that we pick the thickest thickness possible. Of course, it's not going to be wide enough to cover our timeline, but don't worry. 
Now let's just do our best to follow the path until we meet the second icon, okay? And if you're not happy with your line, you can always hit Ctrl Z to undo and try one more time. Okay, this is looking good. And next, let's pick the mouse arrow tool so that we can select the path that we have just drawn. And now let's go to width options and let's use 45 points. And this way, as you can see, it becomes super huge and we can send it to back. And now it perfectly covers this segment of our timeline. That's awesome. Let's make sure that the scribble is selected. Let's jump into animations and let's add a replay animation duration 2 seconds. Let's give it a preview and as you can see the first segment nicely fills with a bright purple color. That's nice and all of this is possible thanks to the draw replay animation and thanks to the mask that we have created previously. And now by following the same steps we can create the rest of the segments. So first of all let's just draw a path with a draw tool. And now to save some time we can select the first scribble, hit Ctrl Shift C to copy the style. Now let's select the second scribble and hit Ctrl Shift V to paste the style. And now we can send the second scribble to back. Let's select the first scribble again and we can use the animation painter to paste the same animation to the second scribble as well. And this way we can really speed up our workflow and now we have two segments. That's nice. So let me finish creating the rest of these segments and I'll catch you in a second. And finally, let's draw the last segments. Once again, let's select the draw tool and let's do our best to follow this path just like that. Okay. And as before, we can select the previous scribble, copy the formatting and paste it to the current scribble so that it becomes thick. And we can use the animation painter as well to paste the same animation. And now we should have six replay animations in the animation pane. Looking beautiful. And next, my friends, let's select all of those bubbles with emojis inside and let's animate them as well. So let's hold down the shift key and let's select all of these bright bubbles. Okay. And let's go to add animation and let's go to more entrance animations and let's look for an animation which is called spinner. I think it fits really well in this situation. So here it is, spinner. Let's click OK and skadoosh. This way we have added six spinner animations. And for the duration, let's use something fast, for example, 0.4 seconds. And now let's just make sure that we place these spinner animations in the correct spots in the animation pane. So let's move the first spinner animation at the top. And now let's select the rest of these guys. Let's make sure they start with previous. And now let's just place them in between the replay animations, just like that, okay? And if you wish, you can always zoom in into your animation timeline so that you can see all of your animations better. But let's just zoom back. I think the zoom level is looking good. And now let's select the rest of these spinner animations and let's just move them to the right edge so that they're touching the end of all of those replay animations so that we have something that looks like this, okay? So basically with the first mouse click, we should get the first emoji bubble. And with the second mouse click, we should get the first segment and the second emoji bubble. So let's check it out on the full screen and let's see if everything is working as expected. Okay, so on the first click, we get the first emoji bubble and on the second click, the first segment gets filled and we can see the second emoji bubble and so on. So it seems that all of the animations are working as expected. That's easy peasy lemon squeezy. And by the way, if we would like to, we could take this timeline animation to the next level by making it interactive. We would have to use animation triggers. We would have to make sure that those draw replay animations are triggered once we click on specific emoji bubbles. And in this tutorial, we'll not be covering animation triggers because it's a bit more advanced topic. However, if you'd like to master PowerPoint animations, then I would definitely recommend checking out the PowerPoint Animation Mastery course on pptskill.com where I'll teach you all of the animation secrets step by step until you become a PowerPoint animation pro. And by the way, you can save $100 with coupon OneSkill100. So make sure you insert the coupon during checkout to get the discount. Okay, my dear friends, now you know how you can create this beautiful animated timeline by using draw replay animations and a mask. And if you have enjoyed watching this video, I'm sure you will enjoy watching this video next where you can learn how you can create an animated timeline as well, but this time using the morph transition. That's super duper awesome, so I'll see you there.